again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And my allergies are absolutely making me crazy. Oh, I hate it. Can I just I tell mean... you? I mean, like, I, I'm, I, I can't connect it to COVID, but I find it highly odd that I've had allergies all my life. Last summer, my eyes were literally chapped. My eyes were like bloodshot red because they were so itchy. Dan used to watch me and he'd be like, I think you're just gonna like stick a stick in your eye and scratch it. You know, <laughs> like it was that bad. And then in the last few days, my nose has just taken off and I'm like, I'm not usually, this is not usually when I'm really terrible. So here's the thing, right? With allergies is it is actually also autoimmune response. Yep. So it could be, you know, that it's new pollen mm. or that kind of stuff. But it can also be if your body is just like overly strained. Right. I mean, that's part of the concern that I have with something like these uh, vaccines oh. that we don't know what's going to happen because if you have an autoimmune response, which can manifest in yeah, worse allergies, of, joint pain, all sorts like of, all the stuff, like all the stuff where you're just like, stuff. like yeah. why the heck am I so achy or why right? am I, you know, how come my knees hurt Cert. at this? I mean, and I know because I went through all of that after I got a vaccine. So <laughs> take it, you know, yep. out of the mouth of babes. But yep. um, yeah, allergies. Do you remember last year, this time, I think was round about the time we did the first reopen rallies. And I remember driving to Concord and getting a push phone call from the Department of New of Health of New York City. I still have a I remember nine oh sorry that's gonna okay, be Okay, that's fine. That's <laughs> sorry, fine. As long guys. as we know what it is. Um I do remember um, you mentioning this. Yeah, so so I, I'm driving to a reopen New Hampshire rally at the State House and I get this voicemail and I'm like, what is this? And it's a voicemail that starts with, if you have a runny nose, a headache, a fever, or a cough. You may have COVID. Or you may have allergies. And I was like, or you could have seasonal allergies. And honestly, that call was the start of my skepticism. Like because I was like, if it's a pandemic, are you looking for customers? Are you yeah. looking for patients? Or are you overwhelmed? Whoop. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, you know I'll what? talk. Well, let's talk. I'll talk. So I do have to agree. I have, I've always been skeptical of, um, you know, we're identifying people for all the wrong reasons, but um, the the vaccines are truly concerning. I, I have no intention of being vaccinated for this virus, mainly in part because um, my age bracket has a 99.85% survivability rate, and I don't think I need to um, inject a vaccine that I could that could have more negative consequences than what I would benefit from. I mean, that's the reality. I, I think people have to balance the risks. You have to, you know, you make these choices on everything. You decide whether or not, I mean, we all make a, take a, um, a certain amount of risk when we get in our cars and we get on a road with other people and drive. There is a certain amount of risk and we know how to avert the risk. You wear your seatbelt. You don't drive like a maniac. Well, you, you know, also like don't have the newspapers and then mainstream media telling you nonstop every day, you're going to die when you get in your car. I don't generally <laughs> read the, the MUR or union leader headlines that bubble through Facebook because they're always just like crazy list. But there were two this weekend because other people have are commenting there was one i think it was um in saturday's it was in the saturday feed or whatever i'm pretty sure it was from mur and it said you know this many new covid cases two new deaths and i'm like whatever and then somebody commented so then it made me go back and look one of the two deaths that they were reporting as new deaths was actually in december and i thought why would you do that headline? Why wouldn't you say one new death and then in the context of the article say they also identified somebody from back, you know, four months ago? I mean, then, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because we're being manipulated by a state-controlled narrative. Two days later, so again, within like sometime between Friday and Monday, the headline was one new death from February, two months ago. And I'm like, this isn't new. This is not news. This is just fear mongering. This is just constantly f f bombarding people. So, with so here fear. would be more important or interesting news. I haven't seen this reported no anywhere. I uh, I have some sources in the National Guard. Yeah. And mm. they are working on doing the vaccinations. Uh, they have talked about how. 
you know, from the start, especially at the start when they were doing the drive-by yeah. ones where they had to stand outside and do the vaccinations, everyone was saying, please, can we move this indoors because these vaccines that are supposed to be kept cold were freezing. And I'm like, okay, that seems weird. Yeah. If they're supposed to be stored at like, yeah, like 78 minus or something, then why are they freezing right. in a New Hampshire winter? That seems strange, but okay. But then I know over this weekend, there were so many adverse uh, reactions to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine on Sunday that they're going to stop administering it till they can figure out what is causing blood, the clots. blood clots. So I mean, blood clots bad. lead to strokes, heart attacks, very severe physical yep. reactions that could happen. So if we're looking at a situation where the death rate from a coronavirus, a common cold virus, is your survival rate is 99.98%, yep. so 0.02% chance of dying. And now we're administering these these injections, these experimental medical non-approved e non-fda so, approved not so they're I'm not approved. fda approved and i think people need to understand this they're approved for emergency use right. which pretty much says we tested it on thirty thousand people a couple of people died we think that's a uh, reasonable well, risk and if it was, let's just try it know, on other Carla, people if people if the the death rate i mean there's been a lot of people who died but the rate isn't it's not like 20 percent of people are dying you know what i mean if there was people like just dropping in the streets then yes an emergency non-approved vaccine because you're literally dropping in the streets would make sense which is also i think the good rule of thumb right so i feel like after this year we look at what's going on and it's like how how are we in this world where it seems like two groups of people have entirely different realities at this stage, right? Like there's the COVID cult and these people are very fearful. They think masks are going to save us, like that whole world. And then you have this other world of people who've just pretty much gone on with their lives. Yeah. And, they're, and, and they're both communities. There's not, the ones that have moved on with their life aren't, aren't, aren't more infected or more dying that's what's perplexing is like if you really look at the data from state to state from region to region from uh, none of this seems to actually have a a large impacting but but so here's the thing so you have two these two groups of people and i'm like do you know how you get people to agree there's a pandemic there's a pandemic, right? So you can't have this reality. Yes, I understand lots of people have died, but if you actually look at the numbers, that many people would have right. died right. anyway. So the all cause mortality for the world is on par or slightly higher, but it's right? not like hugely but it's not higher. pandemic no. high. It's not Spanish flu no. high. I mean, the chart I saw. Let's say the Spanish flu was as high as this microphone. Then. Then this <laughs> down here is this. Well, so we we can agree that was a pandemic, and right. and so it's like, well, the data the data says that everything that has happened has been some kind of well, like mind control, thought control, government control narrative. That's what the data says. The people trying to share that data. Get on social down. media <laughs> are now actively shut down. So this morning, I got a warning on an article from the National Institute of Health that I shared over the weekend that came from a trusted source. And it basically said uh, there's no actual study that shows the uh, efficacy of masks, but here are the negative effects of masks. Yeah. There's a good chart. It's broken down. There are probably 40 or 50 symptoms yeah. on it. Um, you know, it's it's a good article. So this morning, I'm checking my phone, and I get this warning from Facebook that you shared something that's mostly false, or right, right. partly false, sorry, partly false. And I'm like, I did? Really? I really do right, try and right. be mindful. I, try not I to check share my this, sources. Right. I read the source study. I feel a, a, a obligation, right. and, and I right, want people to trust my brain. Exactly. So I want people to trust me. So I really do try and be good about it. And I was like, I shared something that was partly false. Ooh, what did I do? And then I went and looked. Okay, so it's an it's an article on the National Institute of Health. It had, let's say, 40 or 50. I didn't actually count them, so take that part with a grain of salt. There was one of the side effects 
that they said, well, that one isn't entirely, like, you can't 100% prove that this one side effect out of 40. So now there's a warning on my social media accounts that, this that could say be false. I'm sharing false news. And I'm like, okay. Like, that for me was the final straw. I'm working on a blog post about how I am personally being censored. I cannot share information. Right. And I'm like, why? This is the question folks back home have to ask themselves. If what I'm saying is entire nonsense. If I'm wrong about this, like we're t we're moving towards a totalitarian control state and possibly a socialist takeover, and like wh who knows, right? If I'm wrong, why are alternate voices being silenced in right. a way that would put any totalitarian regime? To shame. I will tell you, Goebbels and Stalin and every and Franco, like every dictator who has ever lived, is just applauding wherever they are, going, Wow, look <laughs> at these guys go. Pravda 2.0. It is crazy. Um, I know you saw it, but I, what, same, same subject, different subject. Um, Brad Keys. Yeah. who we both happen to know um, outside of news. Right. Um, I think we might have mentioned this. I don't know if we mentioned it last week. I think we I might think we have. Just, it had just briefly, come out. I think it was happened, last yeah. Tuesday morning. So Brad Keyes used to be the coach um, for Pinkerton Academy, not Pinkerton, Pembroke, Pembroke Academy's um, track and field, and he refused to um, go along Force with Force his students to, to wear, wear masks. masks while they were cross-country running and whatnot. And um, I did see him. He Force his students yes. to wear something on their mat while they're while outdoors. outside running. Chill, kids that don't have the, I mean, I don't know why, they're, kids aren't dying. So like, what are you doing? So he, I did see him on Tucker Carlson's show and he did a really good job. And he was saying he took it upon himself to put a mask on and run one of these long distance runs. Oh, wow. Because he's a, you know, he is a runner. He's not, this isn't a coach who doesn't know what he's, you know. He's, right. He's not he a goes, fat coach. So he goes, so I, I figured I, so that I could have firsthand knowledge. experience yeah. and knowledge. And he said, it was absolutely awful. He said, part of the thing people don't realize is when you're running in these strenuous long runs, what's happening is you're actually pulling that mask tighter because you're breathing so, so, go, so like and, you're making a vacuum, yes. right? And he so, said, yes. so basically the only air you're getting is what is getting coming through that. He goes, D masks are designed so that air can come in in other places. And he said it was absolutely awful. And he goes, and I, which I'm, is also where germs can go out, right. which is why they're not um, efficient. But he said he just wasn't going to, you know, this isn't his full-time job. This isn't his, he's self-employed. It's not like this. He didn't do this for the money. Right. He did this for the kids. And for the and, passion um, of it. You know, I did and, see, he got like national attention because I did see it um, bubble across. I think he was on Fox yesterday. He's on Target. I saw Tucker it on Carlson. All our local news. Yeah, it was on some lo some national media. You know, I don't know if it was um, Daily Wire or whatever, but it was like there was an article about look, this coach has just said enough is enough, and he brought up a good point on Tucker Carlson's show that I, he said, you know, these schools have these across the board mandates that they can't. I, he goes, I've asked. What what are we basing that decision on? He goes, and I don't ever expect to get an answer because I don't believe they're basing it on anything. He said, but in some schools, he goes, think about this. He goes, singles tennis. <laughs> they're nowhere near another human being, but the schools are making those kids wear masks while they're outside, 60 feet away from their opponent. Uh, it's just crazy. It's all just gotten so well, absolutely well, crazy. So, so there's a term, Ouroboros. And it right. is a symbol. It's a symbol is a snake that eats its own yes, tail. Yes, yes. And I think we're in Ouroboros stage, right? Where it's like the, the government has gotten so big that it's starting to eat its own tail, right? Because we live, so we've created this fear paradigm and, uh, and, uh, and lawyers have way too much power and control. Uh, liability is not assigned in the right way. We should really try and sort of revert more to, you know, enter at own risk. Yep. Life is a risk, you know, uh, understanding all of that right. kind of stuff. But it's basically so because lawyers currently have no, there's no incentive for them to take the least invasive the, yes. position. They have an incentive to be like CYA. So yep. cover, cover your butt. Um, uh, 
by by just being like, well, if we do this, no one can sue us and no one right. can complain and no one can whatever, right? So everyone's kind of going there. To the extreme. But it's like, but that's not reality. And how are we supposed to? So now kids, really, they're supposed to do track in masks. Like that. Not because science says but, those but, kids need that level of protection. But, but so because sh- we've just short-sighted because it's like so what do you think is going to happen when one of those kids gets some serious health consequence from this because i don't think it's just a battle of like oh this works or oh this doesn't work or these are the side effects and carla just because she says so it's like these are real side effects if you're like breathing these things and again i mean what chemicals are on these yeah these things that you're like sucking well, there on was a day. report last week that a bunch of ch- children size masks were found to have had asbestos in them oh great so that's good yeah. let's do that let's breathe have our kids breathing in asbestos rather than running track with you know just breathing air and, and again you know if we had actually approached this from a holistic perspective if we had talked about things like getting more sunlight you know one thing you never see on these wmur sites or all these sites that are literally just fear uh, uh, fear mongering all day and and um and and I mean, it's it's like government (laughs) mouthpieces. You know, Tammy, I grew up in a police state, right? So at one stage in South Africa, they started banning certain words from being reported on. And the thinking was, if we don't let people report on these words, then they can't tell the stories. Now, the alternate media was, you know, this is pre-social media, so you had to print your paper and all of that, right? Um, we're like, okay, we see what you're going to do. So we're going to start printing the stories with the blacked out words. So you could read a newspaper and there were illegal border wars going on. So in South Africa at the time, uh, white people, white males had military conscription. So everyone was forced to go to the army and then they were putting them on the borders on these illegal border wars. And all of that was kind of secret government stuff. I mean, you know, we have some of that going on today here in uh, the great United States. And not the conscription part, but, you know, the, the secret the stuff <laughs> happening, the secret surveillance and all of that. So um, you weren't allowed to say Casper, which was a type of bear cat, okay. so a militarized vehicle. Um, I, I think you weren't allowed to say the locations of the places. So you could read the paper and it'd be like, you know, uh, it, so, so it'd be like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Like, wh- like, where is this happening and what's going on? So now... Now, instead of that sort of censorship, which makes you the consumer or you the citizen aware that there's something fishy yeah. going on, what we're doing now is we've sort of wholesale shifted all of that to where it just seems normal that you're only getting government approved narratives. That is what WMUR yeah. and NHPR and all of that sort of thing is where you're only hearing about deaths. Yeah. You're only, you know, and well, and, I mean, you didn't see a headline that says the CDC has changed its opinion on um, hand sanitizers and surface uh, disinfectant. That apparently you have like a one in ten thousand chance. You know, like you're the chance of even somebody if I had COVID and you didn't have COVID and I coughed on this table and you were doing things and handled things, you still wouldn't get COVID. So. It's right on the CDC's website that they, like, oh, and here's the thing now. But you don't see that in the headline so that people aren't still running around with the crazy hand sanitizer. I mean, I I do think, I'll be honest, I've been really turned into an anti-mask obstinate person these last few days. (laughs) And Florida Florida ruined me. I don't know what to tell you. But I... um, I've stopped wearing my mask in the grocery store. I just, there's, I'm not, well, I mean... I'll wear it to go to certain restaurants. I'll wear it at work because my boss is still crazy. Um, I wear it on a plane. You know, like there are places I pick and choose. I'll be honest. But I was like, I walk into the grocery store. I am conscious now. I'm paying attention. I also realize I'm never near another human being that doesn't want to be near me. Right? So what, what, how would these people catch this? So I've been going to Mark Basket. No problems. Um, um, I went to Hannaford the other day just to grab lettuce, just to grab a little box of lettuce. I knew I was going, running in, running out. And the woman at the door was like, they're back, still paying an employee to sit there and hand out masks. This all costs money. So Hannaford's taking their, I mean, p- what you're paying in prices is so that you can subsidize this bizarre practice that we still are doing. And she's like, um, do you need a mask? And I said, no, I actually don't. And she goes, oh, and she like, 
it's just her job. Right. And I said, I have no intention of catching or giving anybody anything. So no. And she's still handing it to me. And I go, oh, okay. So I walked around the store with this mask in my hand that I thought was really, it was pretty nice mask as far as quality. So it'll go down into the wood shop where Dan can actually benefit from it because he should wear a mask when he's cutting wood because you shouldn't breathe that stuff in. But it was just like, what world? We went to the liquor store. I noticed there's no signs on the door anymore. Like, I'm now starting to watch, like, are, is everybody else scaling back? And I mean, New Hampshire liquor store did not have a sign saying you had to wear a mask. Um, you know, because I think do it as said, we practice say, practice social distancing. As, and I'm okay with do. signs that say, please practice social distancing. Because obviously some people don't understand that they shouldn't be up in your space. They shouldn't have been up in your space in the first place. Well, yeah. I mean, I... I... Yes. And whatever. I went to Murphy's on Friday night for dinner and there wasn't a, I, there was a waiting line for every outdoor seat. Every single table was full. Everybody. Well, I mean, I read, happy. I read on, um, I think it was Timothy Lang's post. He's the state rep mm. and he's been on the task force. And I, I think it was today and I think it was him, but they said, oh, now they're going to revise um, the, the seating from six feet to three feet. Right. So again, you know, just for people to prime you for a little bit of skepticism back home. So were they wrong when it was six well, feet or are they right when it's three feet? Are they wrong that like, just I do, do think, you understand that they are just making stuff up? And then I do think that a lot of people, the task force and lots of things, when you see that total, you know, where you see it change, one of the hardest thing entities, people, organizations, whatever, have a hard time with is admitting when they, they were incorrect. So this is part of the problem you have with the people who are still totally freaked out over COVID. They, ha they aren't leaving their house. They spent a year not talking to their mother, you know, like they, they didn't go oh visit God, grandma. I, they, their kids didn't go see other kids. Like they did this for 12 months, 13 months, 15 months, whatever. I saw and it. I think now when you well, finally start to realize, like we have a friend, Dan has a coworker who lived in California, totally under lockdown, kicked all his roommates out of his apartment because he was that paranoid about it because he didn't want to catch COVID, lived by himself. And so he incurred all that extra expense. Um, early in the COVID decided he was moving to Colorado. The first snowstorm he had in the last few months, he had to go out and shovel, sees that all his neighbors are out and everything. And he says to Dan, he goes, they're all just still living. And now he's thinking, <laughs> so for a year, yeah, I, I locked myself I in mean, the I house. I think that's the trauma that we're actually going to have to talk about. And that is going to be tough. But what I hope comes out of that sort of sense of, uh, dismay, maybe anger. Like, I think it's going to be all the, the entire process mm. of, you know, yeah, from, the from denial to yeah. acceptance. Like, that, 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 is like, oh, I'm going... angry that they lied to me. I'm going to finally accept that they lied to me. Well, now I'm merely up depressed because I just spent a year in my house with no reason. And then, yeah, well, then well, eventually, accept comes last, yeah. you know, so it's denial and then there's anger, anger and then there's, uh, you know, like the, you read, uh, re, you go back, back and doubt and, yourself or something. So, else. so, I think the best that people can do, people like us, is to really express some empathy yep. with these people, right? But it's also an opportunity because the, the opportunity here for every individual should be, okay, maybe I should approach big government with a little skepticism. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should be thinking what is the balanced role between the relationship between us as free individuals and the government that purports to work for us that is basically enslaving us now and saying that you do not have self-ownership. I mean, there is a claim on a societal level that is coming that says the government owns you and they can tell you what to do with your own body. And I'm like, that's nonsense. Yeah. So I think the skepticism that needs to come out of this is oh, okay, when they tell me to do something, maybe I should, I don't know, listen to Carla and Tammy <laughs> to start see what, with. <laughs> see what the opposing opinion is. Right, but, the, but, but part of the challenge now is going to be that we are, we're actually eliminating opposing opinions. And again, that is a giant, giant tell from big pharma, big government, big tech. These people are all colluding. They are cronies and they are colluding together for their benefit and for their friends. There's a lot of people getting very rich out of yep. what happened over the last year. And it's not us, it's not the little guy, it's not the people advocating for human freedom, human liberty, human dignity, and human flourishing. And 
you know, and, and you're going to have to pick a side at some stage, folks. And, and I certainly hope that people pick the side that talks about liberty and freedom and being able to make your own choices in life and not being beholden to some big monolith that thinks that we're just their subjects that they can just like literally experiment on. <laughs> um, not change the subject, but we, I know, we should. I don't know. I what, think we got a five um, minute warning. So I did, um, I wanted to mention a couple things. One, Victoria Sullivan, all in on the mayor's race. Announced. She has announced that she is a candidate for mayor of Manchester. Go Victoria. Um, I'm sure we'll have her on in the upcoming weeks. Um, I also wanted to remind people that this week with your regular trash pickup is the start of spring yard waste pickup. Thank you to Alderman Porter and all those that advocated and made everybody realize that it was absolutely insane to think that they could pick up yard waste once a month. Um, I'm personally befuddled that my alderman, Bill Barry, voted against reinstating this. This is the same guy who originally, when he was running for office, thought we should have a fine if your grass got too long. So where's the irony in that, right? Get fined for too long grass, but we're not going to pick up your grass clippings. But anyways, the reality is it, uh, yard waste pickup, um, there's restrictions. You can go to manchesternh.gov forward slash solid waste and it's got all the restrictions because you can't put out trees That's you know things can't be URL. more than <laughs> they can't be more than like three feet long so just be cognizant of that um this all gets picked up by Pinard waste um it's every week on your regular pickup day this week through the week of may 21st so you've got you know four or five weeks to get your yard cleaned up and then after that for the summer it's every other week until october 18th and then they go back to every week until um, the last week of no November. So uh, do yourself a favor, get the next four weeks, get your leaves picked up, all the scrub from winter, um, and do your neighbors a favor. And if you've got one of those spots on your street that has like no home in front of it, clean that up because that's the eyesores in the city. I mean, and the reality is, is the government is never coming to clean that if, for you. I, I mean, we pick up trash all the time. I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I have so many degrees and basically <laughs> I spend, you know, an hour a day picking up other people's trash. But you're welcome. <laughs> uh, be what you want yes. to see yes. in the world. Let's make Manchester a, a better place. And the best way to start is in your own little neighborhood and on your own street and the sidewalk. And what, with what you can control. So yourself... Your friends, your neighbors, yep. that is what we can control. Stop worrying about other things. Yep. Um, I saw a meme this week, and we can wrap up with this, but it said, you know, put off the news because we were never designed to carry the burden of the yes, world. Yes, no. Fix your own lives. Fix your own lives. Anyways, that's all we got for this week. If you have any ideas, send them to us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Check out Carla's book. The ecstatic pessimist. One time she's going to let me say it. <laughs> no. uh, on Amazon. And CarlaGarrick.com. There you go. Thanks, all we got. We'll see you next week.